forward statistics, some collecting the data and analyzing it and representing the value. So here the statistics here what you are going to see is the mean that is average and uh, median, mode, range and standard deviation. So these are the things we are going to see here. So what is mean, average? When you have around 10 data, each having different values, each value cannot be referred separately. So in order to refer the entire data, represent the entire data, we find out one particular value which is average and the average is nothing but the total sum of the values divided by the quantity. So this is the average. Similarly, the median. The median is where you arrange all the data in the ascending order and take the center value, the middle value. So if you have odd number of values, for example, if you have five values, so you are going to arrange all the five values in ascending order. So the third value which is exactly in the middle or you can say the five if you have then 5 plus 1 by 2 that is the third value. So the third value is going to be the median. If you have even number of values for example if you have 6 values then what you should do is take the nth value in n plus 2 by 2 that value that is you take the third value and fourth value add the 2 and divide by 2. So that becomes your median. So median is just arranging all the values and taking the exact center value whereas mean is where you are going to find the exact middle value by adding all that and dividing by the quantity. And then the next is mode. Mode is one where the number is repeated again and again. Most frequently occurring data is called mode. Suppose you have the data is like 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then 2 is repeated 2 times so therefore 2 becomes the mode. And then range. Range is again when you have different data highest minus lowest gives the range and the last one standard deviation which you are going to see today that is what is standard deviation as I said about the mean if your class there are 60 students and the 60 students average score is 70 so average score how do you arrive you are adding all the data or all the values 60 values you are going to add and divide by 60 that is a mean value so we represent by mean when I say 70 the average score the on an average like most of the students have got 70 does not mean that everybody got 70. So here we have to find out how much is the deviation. There may be some students would have got 80 or some would have got 90 and some would have got 60 or some would have got 55. So this when you add all together is going to give an average of 70 but how much it is deviated. There may be another class where most of the students would have got only 70. Maximum they would have got 72 minimum they would have got around 68 or 67. So when you add all this and divide by 60 you are going to get 60. So there is a difference between the first class and the second class. In the first class you have the date average score as 70 but the highest score is around 90 and the lowest is around 55. But in the second case the same average score is there 70 but the highest score is 72 and the lowest is around 68. So there is a difference. So how do you find the difference? By seeing only the average you can't say both the class marks are same and the students are of similar kind. This difference you can find out by taking the standard deviation. How much it is deviated? When you consider the first class you can see that the deviation is very high. As the average is 70 the highest score is going to be 90 and the lower side it is going to be 55. The deviation is quite high. From 70 to 90 it is a 20 so difference is 20 this side and the other side it is around 15. But in the second class when you consider the average is 70 and the highest score is 72 the deviation is only 2 points. So almost everybody got the similar mark. So how to differentiate the two classes? This is done by finding out the standard deviation. So this is what you are going to see today. So standard deviation for this we use is normal distribution curve. We generally consider that if the data is too huge it is distributed in the form of bell that is highest. This is a bell curve we have or you can call this as a normal distribution curve. So this curve the center value is represented by the mean that means the more number of students or more number of population is there with closer to mean. As the value goes away from the mean from both the sides above up, upper side as well as the lower side the population keep coming down. So you can see when I say the average score of a class is 70 then the more number of students are 
closer to 70. Many would have got 71, 72 or 69, 68. Very few students would have got around 80 and still if you go further 90 they would have almost one or two students. Similarly this side also when the score is very close to 50 or 40 the students number of students will be very very less. So this is a bell curve which you are going to see now where some students are there and near the mean and it gets lesser and lesser as it goes away from the mean. So the spread that is the first class which I was telling you the data are widely spread whereas in the second case the data are narrowly spread. So when I consider the data are widely spread you can see the bell curve is going to be in this way where the distribution is very high mean is here and both the sides the deviation is quite high. In the second class where I said the 70 is a mean and 72 maximum or 68 is a minimum you can see the bell curve will be in this way where the mean is here but the deviation is quite less. So this indicates the deviation of the score. So as I said in the class first, the first class when you consider the data in the middle that is mean which is represented by 70, in the second case also it is represented by 70 but the deviation here maximum is 90 as minimum consider as 50 and similarly here 72 and 68. So you can see the graph also the bell curve the shape it is more widened because the deviation is more and if the deviation is very less as here this only deviation is only 2 it is narrowed down. So this is the difference but we are going to give more importance to this because we are going to make use of the formula or how to arrive at this deviation or how to arrive the highest score or the lowest score. So now here this curve as we are considering the middle value as mean value there will be around 50 percent of the population above the mean and 50 percent of the population are below the mean. This again generalized for solving the simple problems we are going to have this as 34 percentage that is both the size of the mean we consider this for 34 percentage which is one standard deviation away from the mean. This is the mean value above mean this side is 34 percentage and this side again 34 percentage this is again one standard deviation away from the mean in the upper side and this side one standard deviation away from the mean in the lower side. So 34 plus 34 which is again 68 percentage so we can say the deviation of one standard deviation from the mean when you consider from both the upper side and the lower side it is around 68 percentage or two third of the population. Two third of the population lie within one standard deviation from the mean in both the sides when you consider. 